In this tutorial, we'll look at how you can add multiple images with a very cool layout in HTML. All right, so I have a simple example here. I just have an empty HTML file. So this is what we see so far. And here we have a bunch of images. They're sitting in the image folder. So these are already local on my computer. If you don't have your images on your computer yet, what you can also use is something like Unsplash, where you can, where you can find all sorts of beautiful stock photos for free. So if you're still looking for images, you can find them there. But let's say you already have a couple of images. I have some images here and we want to output this on the page and hopefully with some nice layout. What we would start with here in the HTML is with an HTML boilerplate. So you can write HTML, get the second option and press tab. And what you get is something like this. It's not really important to understand what's going on here. I can change the title here to uh, my photos. And then you can open this in the browser by clicking and dragging this onto this top bar, top part of the browser. You can see that the title here is displayed in the tab here. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. You don't have to do that. Okay, now let's see. Let's say that we want to add those images. So here in the HTML in the body, I would write image and then press tab. And here it asks me for the location of the image. Now it's in the images folder, which is actually at the same level here. So I can write simply images and then the image. Well, let's say photo one, right? So that would be photo dash one dot JPEG. Now here they also ask for an alt uh, value that's for search engines and for um, people with disabilities. I'm going to ignore that for now. Uh, but if you need to pop, you know, if you need to publish it on the internet and you want to help um, people with uh, dis disabilities and so on, you and, and SEO, all of that stuff, make sure you also include the alt uh, attribute. So I'm going to duplicate this three more times because we have four images. Can be photo two, photo three, and photo four. Right, those are the names of the files here. So make sure you have. The correct path and file name so then if you save that and refresh you should see the images now the images for me are very big so they're not the correct size so it's going to look like a big mess so the first step here would to restrain their size so i'm going to use css for that we could create a separate css file but um, we can keep it a little bit simple here you can just write style in here and then in here you can write CSS actually, and we can select these images, right? So we can select elements by their tags. So we're selecting all images on the page now. And what we can say, for example, is we want their width to be 400 pixels and their height to be 400 pixels as well. Let's see what we get if we do that. I'm gonna save here, I'm gonna refresh. And now this is what we get. So their, their sizes are a little bit better now. Now it looks a bit strange because images, they have certain dimensions. So when you start playing around with the width and height of an image, they can look a little bit distorted, right? They have a certain aspect ratio. Um, you know, naturally the photo has a certain aspect ratio. You can see here, this one is a bit wider than it is long, right? But here I'm setting the height and width to the same size, right? So I'm sort of changing the aspect ratio and can, can look a little bit strange. So to solve that, you can say object fit cover. And what that will do if I refresh here, it will sort of respect that aspect ratio. It will actually cut off part of the image and it will sort of uh, preserve that aspect ratio. Right? So this is what you get in the default layout. Let me zoom out a little bit because it's a bit big. This is what you get. And maybe this is all you need. But now we can take a look at how you can create an even better uh, layout. So let's say you just want, um, you, you want to center them horizontally and vertically. So let's try doing that. So we can use Flexbox for this, right? So if you want to do anything with web development, make sure you understand Flexbox and CSS in general. I have a course on CSS. Definitely check it out. The link is in the description. But what you can do, is you can select the parent element here and you can say display flex. When you do that, well, not much will change. Actually, the, the space between the images gets removed, but the layout is still the same. Um, but now we have un unlocked, you could say the flexbox functionalities. So if we want to center them horizontally, we can say justify content center. They would sit in the center. Now, if we also want to center them vertically, we would use align items center. But this is only going to work if the body itself is already 100% of the of the viewport, right? So the viewport is what we see of, of the website. And right now, the body is not the complete height yet because there is not enough content. So we would have to say min height. The minimum height of this body should be at least 100% of that viewport height. This is a bit advanced. You know, a lot of developers don't really understand this, so you don't really need to understand this either. But that's how you would center this horizontally and vertically. Now we do get a strange uh, scroll bar here, and that's simply because the browser adds some default styling to a lot of elements. 
but add some padding and margin to the body. So what a lot of people do is they, they have a simple reset. So you can select all elements with the, with the universal selector. And you can remove all the margin and the padding that the browser adds to these elements. So if we do that, you can see that we get rid of that scroll bar issue. And this is maybe what you want. Now maybe you can change the background color, right? Maybe we can say background color here for the body. Um, if you, if you, well, maybe that was a bit quick. I can write background, right? And it will back, and it will already suggest background color. And then there are all these built-in colors in CSS. Maybe you, you can find one, let's say beige. And this is now what we have. All right, now let's take a look at a more advanced layout that we could want. So I'm going to undo this with um, online items and justify content. I'm going to refresh here. This is what we have. So maybe we want we want them to take up the entire width, let's say. So what we can do is still display flex. So we still, we're still using Flexbox here. We can give each image the uh, flex property. We can set it to any number, but this will allow them to grow. Because with this number, we're basically saying what portion of the available space they should take up. Right, they're all getting the same portion, so they're going to take up the entire width here, and they're all going to get an equal portion of that available space. Maybe you want one particular image to be a little bit wider than the other ones. Well, you can maybe, for example, the, the third one. Right, so we can select the third image here. We can say image, but we want the third child. We can say this one should have a flex property of let's say a flex value of let's say three. So it's going to be three times as big as the other ones because the other ones will still have one, right? So now this one gets uh, th is going to be three times as big as this one, and also three times as big as the other ones. All right, now this looks a bit strange, and actually uh, it's not entirely true because the, this image is naturally not that big. So this this there may be some exceptions to how this works depending on the original size of the image. Um, for example, this image has a slightly different um, aspect ratio, so this one is taller than it is wide. So you may run into issues uh, once you start working with images that have different aspect ratios. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to look at a different type of layout. So maybe what you want is actually that they, they sort of wrap onto a new line and you get maybe two by two. So you get um, um, not, every, not, not, not every image sitting on the same line, but you get more uh, a more distributive look. So what you can do is give each image a flex basis property as it's called. So basically you can just set a width that they should have here also with the flex property. So we can say each image should be 200 pixels, but they're allowed to grow bigger. And then also what we need to do is we need to allow these images to wrap onto a new line. So we can say flex wrap, wrap. When we do that, let's see, the image now, the images now will be at least 200 pixels. And as we make the viewport smaller, what's gonna happen is that at some point there's not enough space anymore to be 200 pixels. So one of them, the, the last one will move onto a new line. So this is what you get. Now, by default, there's going to be some space between the lines because we've set the min height to 100%. If you want them to stick to the other line, you can just remove that. If I refresh here um, against the, the first row, and then if we make it smaller and smaller again, right? So this is called responsiveness. As, as we make it smaller and smaller, you can see at some point there's not going to be enough space anymore to be 200 pixels. And so this one's also going to move to that new row. And now you get this nice 2x2 two uh, layout and this is what you're going to get on smaller devices right so as you make it smaller and smaller you're going to see that they will start wrapping onto new lines and actually it's, it looks pretty cool i think this layout but maybe you you want this type of layout on a bigger device as well so not only on mobile or tablets but maybe you know like this maybe you want a two by two layout here let's see how we can do that now the, the easiest way would simply be to increase this this number here so you would have to play around a little bit so maybe 500 right now we only get wrapping of one element maybe it should be 600 okay maybe 800 i'm gonna refresh here yeah so 800 does it for me and you can see that now we have this two by two uh, layout now maybe you don't want it to cover the entire width here of the page maybe there should be some space on the sides you can give some padding to the bottom to the body right so you can say zero on top and bottom but maybe 300 pixels on the left and right side and actually what that will do is it will it will restrain the available space even more so now we can reduce this mark this number again maybe to 500 and now you get this maybe it shouldn't sit at the top here maybe it should sit um, a little bit lower so you can add padding to the top right, you can do it after this one there's no problem let's make that 100 pixels Right, so you can play around and uh, try to get the exact layout that you're looking for.
exist. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.